Today we have a very special treat. I had the opportunity to interview five of our members, and we will share this interview with you now, after which I'll say a few words. But first, let's hear from these longtime and newer members first, three of whom are in our room with us here today. Welcome. I would like to begin by inviting you all to introduce yourselves and share when you became a member of Chalice, how long you've been a member. My name is Sue Rose Grant, and I've been coming to Chalice since 1968. However, when I first came, there was really not uh, any emphasis, emphasis on joining. So I don't think I really joined until uh, 1970 or maybe even 71. I mean, there was a book that appeared at some point for us to uh, sign, but before that, there was really just uh, uh, come and join us. Hi, I'm Selma Williams. I've been several names as a member of the fellowship, but I'm Thelma Williams now. And I was a, became a member in 1971. At that time, we were meeting in the gym at, the, at one of the centers in Thousand Oaks. So it was a very small group, but it, I really felt at home immediately. My name is Floyd Martin, and my wife uh, and I joined when our youngest of three daughters was one year old. And we were been active in the group ever since. Uh, I might say we uh, <laughs> were meeting at the Jan's house uh, uh, in Thousand Oaks when we joined. But I, I remember Sue and Thelma when we first <laughs> walked in the door and they were, <laughs> they were very welcoming. And, you know, we just felt at home right away. Wonderful. I'm Danielle. And I'm Weston. And we joined Chalice in January 2020. Wow. We, yeah, when you do the ritual of becoming a member, we did it virtually. So that was fun and different. Tell us a little bit about what had you joined Chalice and what you love about Chalice. Well, first and foremost, I want to say that Chalice is one of those things that, um, and you, you really specifically is, uh, in my opinion, something that you look for. Right. So it's not something that's just your common church, you know, 10 churches in a small town kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, once you start your own spiritual journey, um, you know, you end up fine. Well, at least for us, we found Chalice and we're so happy we did. What led you to us? Our doctor. <laughs> Our doctor, actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our doctor's wife goes to um, her... Her sister goes to a UU in Alaska, I think. Oh, wow. And he's like, oh, being a part of the community helps you, you know, li you live a happier, longer life. And I really recommend if you're not part of a community, he's like, you don't necessarily have to be a, a part of a quote unquote normal church. He's like, there's spiritual <laughs> churches, there's different things. And he's like, you should check out, um, there's a UU in Newbury Park. And I was like, really? I've never heard of that. And then we looked it up and I was like, wow, this is, I saw one of your, your sermons on Facebook just to get like a taste. And I was like, this is cool. <laughs> I really like this. <laughs> yeah, so our doctor was the one who recommended it. <laughs> who knew? That's who knew? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And didn't you just get married, I think, just before you joined? Mm -hmm. Like, yes. Like six months, yeah. Six months. So as newlyweds, you came yep. to us. <laughs> Our theme for this month is renewing faith. And I wanted to ask you all, what has kept your faith in Unitarian Universalism renewed and strong over all these years that you've been a member of this fellowship? When I joined the UU Chalice in 1970, it was a time of great change, including change in my life. I needed an extended family and also a religious home and I found those at, in that little gym building where we were meeting at the time. And I immediately felt that this was where I wanted to be. And I have had that same feeling ever since. How about you, Floyd? What has kept your faith in Unitarian Universalism renewed and strong over all these years? Well, I'll say one thing is that we practice what we preach. 
and uh, we use the democratic process uh, and we're very involved in the community and we address current issues. And uh, I like working with the interfaith committee. We have several, you know, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, uh, Nika was a speaker. It's when we met with the um, Islamic community and uh, she spoke there and we were on the sidewalk. There were other church members there from other churches participating. And uh, the, talk, the, this, the thing was, was to support our, our, our Islamic community. That's, you know, really important to me. And I might say that while we were there, there were two trucks with flags flying, Trump flags, American flags, buzzing by right, right by the curb, as close as they could come to the curb. And here there were children there, you know. I mean, and there's, rah, you know, and they'd race up the one end and they'd go back and, and they'd galley and they'd come racing up again. And I thought, you know, we, we need to <laughs> be involved in this community. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate uh, Nick, Nick, Nick's comments, the rabbi spoke and other uh, community leaders. So that was great. How about you, Sue? What has kept your faith in Unitarian Universalism over these years? Well, um, I needed a community too, like Velma, when I first moved to Newberry Park. And I uh, found it, fortunately, on, uh, at uh, Christmas time at a party. These people were warm, they were welcoming, and they've continued to be over all these years. It's the people that have kept me coming with their ideals and their actions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am very fortunate to be a, a part of this family. And that's why I come every Sunday, is because I need to see my family. Oh, that's wonderful. The teachings are very impactful. Uh, so, you know, shout out to you and everyone else that put all of that together. Uh, the music is amazing. We have so some good. Uh, great talent, you know, with so everyone. <laughs> um, Lucky. Yeah. And, I, I feel like it's important to feel connected, which is one of the most challenging things to do virtually. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Chalice has done amazing. I actually talk about Chalice at work and because we, my work, we're doing virtual um, services right now. And I always talk about, well, Chalice does this and Chalice does that. And I'll tell them like, this is the best thing to do. Emails once a week and this, you know, it's, it's been, it's been nice. It's been needed. It's been necessary. Mm -hmm. Feeling connected and um, during this time and, you know, I'll get phone calls or I'll get, we got cards in the mail and just different things. Like, it's just so nice. It's like those little things, they mean so much. What makes you proud about being part of Chalice? Our seven principles, what we stand for, what uh, groups we have, like our climate change group now and our uh, racial, uh, our anti-racial uh, group, plus so many others. Now, uh, I don't have the energy that I used to have, so I don't, I am not as involved personally in these groups, but it doesn't mean that I'm not supporting them and proud to be in a group where uh, these things are being discussed and action is being taken. What I found about Chalice that speaks to me personally uh, is Chalice is very unique in the sense that it's ever growing. Uh, and it's definitely welcoming as a community, but it also promotes the individual spiritual learning as well. And there's a lot of resources and the community is great in that way. Um, and many groups to be a part of as well. How about you, Danielle? I agree with everything Weston said. <laughs> Plus, I, I love that we're, you know, we're so inclusive and we continue to grow to be inclusive. And, you know, I... I feel like with Chalice, there's something for everybody. Mm -hmm. We honor everybody. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. How about you, Floyd? Well, I'm really proud of what it, what it contributed to my family. Uh, I say, remember, I came with our three children. So as a 
new member with a one-year-old, a, a three-year-old, and a five-year-old, my wife and I, Mary, were involved in RE. And the uh, <laughs> we couldn't get to services because we, we were the RE program. Uh, and the curriculum is outstanding for the, for the youth. Uh, we really uh, we got to know our own kids a lot better, and we got to know their friends better. And uh, we did so many activities that were, you know, amazing. Um, I could go on and on about all the kinds of things we did in, we did in RE. And so that's, that was the foundation. That was the reason for, for one of the reasons for joining was I wanted to, I would just say I was very active in the congregational church. Mary and I were married in the congregational church, but, and I was an officer. I was the financial director. I was involved in committee work with the, with the congregational church, which was now called the United Church of Christ here in Simi Valley. Um, but I had a little trouble staying in that affirmation of faith every morning. Because uh, uh, here's my children with me, you know, and I'm saying, I'm saying these things that I don't really believe in. Um, so I said, you know, I want to join a church where I can really be myself and everything that I, I do uh, reflects that. And that's, that's true about being a Unitarian Universalist for me. So anyway, it's been a, um, glad, I'm proud that we made that transition and we've been active ever since. Thank you for bringing up our children and our families because that is such an important part of who we are as a community. And I know that at one point, this community was known as the church with all the kids, I think around the 2000s or in late 90s. So, um, that's it's so important to have a place where we can bring our kids and raise them with good values and moving forward that way and thank you for the work that you did in our religious education program so grateful for that um Thelma how about you what makes you proud of being part of Chalice for so long oh I'm so proud of being part of Chalice this denomination has been and is a liberal voice in our community in the wider world um like Floyd, I've been on the, I was on the board for years and I think I served just about on every committee that was around, but at that time you had to in order to keep it going. And it was so important that we support each other. And it's not only that, but it's a very influential group and it continues to do that. I'm always so delighted when I hear on the news something about the Unitarians and what they're supporting because we're part of that, we're proud of that. And I see us growing and our active actions in worthy courses today. And I'm just thrilled with how we've developed and how we continue to grow. And uh, I'm still standing on the street corners whenever I can, because I think that it's important for people to see that we are a liberal voice and that we support diversity. And, and it just, it's just thrilling to me that we are able to do that. Mm, I can see how much it matters to you. That's really moving to all of you. Now we're looking forward into the future of Chalice. Today is called Faith in Our Future. What are some of the things that inspire you about our future, possibly as a congregation? There's just a lot of great groups uh, and it's groups, it's different segment groups, but with like-minded individuals, mm -hmm. um, which is a great thing. So very excited. Uh, to eventually join some groups uh, and just like you said forward thinking of the the community and congregation itself so very excited to see what's going to happen in the future mm -hmm. i would like to see uh, something in the future is maybe a congregational softball team <laughs> we have that we have that Weston. Really? we totally oh, yeah. do yes okay Whoever's hearing this interview, please hook up Western, guys. <laughs> we do. Sunday afternoons, they play. Oh, nice. They awesome. play other congregations, and you are going to be recruited to the softball team, I'm sure, Western. What about <laughs> soccer? No, we don't have a soccer team yet. <laughs> Sorry. Definitely something we can think about in future. I just say a lot of folks out there that are friends of ours, that are Unitarian Universalists and don't know it. You know, we need to really share, you know, our our experience with 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 others. And it's uh, it works for any organization. I'm really active in Kiwanis. It's the same thing. Ask. 
you know, hey, why don't you come to a service? You know, right. bring go a to friend. a community forum. Yeah, bring a friend. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we do need to be uh, have more more outreach. And in terms of the, the confidence in the future, I mean, we've proven ourselves to be very financially stable, which is pretty challenging. A lot of churches collapsed and organizations have collapsed because of that. But it's a you know it's a strong commitment we have to uh, to supporting this um, our fellowship and Unitarian Universalism. Yeah, and thank you for all you've done in that way, all of you, to keep us going financially afloat. And we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the commitment of all of you and what you've done over the years, uh, your generosity in so many different ways. So thank you. Really grateful. How about you, Sue? What's your faith in our future about? Well, uh, as uh, Selma has and uh, Floyd have talked about their children, my three children are all Unitarians. Oh, wonderful. Now, uh, they went since 1968, you know, RE, and, uh, you know, at times uh, they loved to come because it was so much fun. Later on, they appreciated the friendships, the values that we have. and. Although they are not always active, my daughter in France, however, goes to the uh, Unitarian Fellowship in Paris. Uh, I think it meets once a month. And so every once in a while, she can get away from her family. My son was very active. He now spends his uh, weekend skiing, but that doesn't mean that he's still a Unitarian. My daughter does, and her daughter do attend uh, church uh, frequently. So I'm very proud of them, and they're definitely going to uh, carry forth forward in our future. I uh, I appreciate the fact that we have been able to grow both as in numbers and in uh, money. And part of it has to do with the fact that we have had very good leadership from Boston and from our local ministers. And I thank very much the fact that uh, Mika has brought us together and kept us together and kept us active and, and uh, was so many new ideas, sometimes I just have to say, help, <laughs> I guess I can't be that, be doing that. But I am in your meditation group, and even though I have meditated a long time, I am learning. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sue. And I so appreciate you bringing up, you know, the generations of children that we impact um, as a community, and hopefully this place thanks to everybody's generosity, will be here for many generations to come for, for, the, for the children's children and so on going forth, offering this special home to them. And, and to close us out, Thelma, how about you? What, what do you have faith in our future at Chalice? Oh, such faith. I'm so proud of where we are now, of our growth and of our active actions in worthy causes. Look at us. It's thrilling to me to see how we have developed from that 11 member group that I joined back in 1971. Wow. Such a change and it's just thrilling. And of course, it's because of the leadership, choosing the minister that we did a few years ago. I mean, that was such a big step for so many people, but it has made such a difference. It's kept us going, Reverend Nika. It really has. And I important causes and our local UU chalice and I'm proud to be able to pledge my money and I, I do donate uh, a nice amount to the fellowship but I'm proud I can do that and when I go to all my volunteer groups that I go to I always try to show them that being a Unitarian is a great thing and sometimes we, I get people to come oh that's what you're talking about I was at a book club the other night and, and they were talking about somebody that was uh, active as a, a Japanese against the war back in the World War. And I said, that person I admire so much. 
And somebody said, well, he sounds like a Unitarian. <laughs> and that was so interesting <laughs> to me to hear that. And that's the kind of image that we put forth to people. And we can have to continue doing that. We have to, at this important, difficult time, continue to support our groups and to come to the fellowship and to donate our money and to pledge our time and effort into continuing to grow in the future. Maybe some year we can even have three services instead of two <laughs> or a new building. That would be amazing as we grow and, uh, and mature. So mm. thank you to all the people who have helped us keep going over these years. Many people don't know that we even exist. And yet there's so many people who need our message and what we offer so badly that, but, and we wish we could get it to them. And I think that's really one of the things I'm looking at to the future is how do we share this amazing gift that you've all talked about now that you've been a part of for around 50 years. How do we share that and give that gift to other people who are really looking for us? And that's maybe a direction we can move into in the future of really figuring out how better to share what this amazing community that we have to offer with our values and what we do in the world. So huge thank you and I, I just want to say you guys have been very sweet in acknowledging my leadership but honestly it would be nothing without all of you and really i feel like we have a shared ministry here and and you know this fellowship is really quite extraordinary and different to many churches that i've served and known about because here everybody joins in and helps out and makes things happen and that's why we have so many things going on here because of everyone's enthusiasm and passion and every idea and uh, time that you bring to our fellowship. So huge thanks to you all and to all of you watching today. Um, so grateful for all that you co-create in this community with us. Welcome. I would like to begin by inviting you. We're not going to do it again. <laughs> and share when you became a member. So let's give a big hand to Thelma, Sue, and Floyd, who are in the room here with us today. How tremendously inspiring to hear from our elders, right? And our future elders. Imagine the many trees, the actual the forests that they've planted for us over these last 60 years and all the decisions they've made over their decades here that allow us to gather and to grow and to find shelter under their branches and to thrive, right? Thank you for your faith in the past and your faith in our future. It is such an honor to have you here with us and for you to share your wisdom with us. And these five remarkable members are just a mere sampling of all the loving, committed believers of this congregation, believers in us, believers in this fellowship. And I want you to know that I see you. I see you truly in your highest essence. I see people who care, <coughs> excuse me, who care deeply about the well being of all. I see people who are compassionate and caring, who will share food and kindness when you're unwell or in need. I see people who care about the future of our planet and the thriving of our children and our grandchildren. I see your commitment, your intentional work, your devotion to do what you can to stem climate change. And I see people who fiercely believe we all need to be accorded equal dignity and worth. Can I hear an amen from the people that are here? <laughs> yes, thank you. I see you working countless hours, getting out the vote, striving to overcome injustice and building beloved community both here and beyond. I see you. My friends, we are the place where love leads. And that's something in this day and age. As we witness the horrors of autocracy and tyranny in Russia's unprovoked attack on Ukraine, as we deal with the continued division and polarization in this country, and as we simultaneously wrestle with personal uncertainties and major challenges in our lives, it's more important than ever 
for us to come together as a strong community, a community that helps us withstand and rise up against the forces of hate and division, right? A community that offers comfort, connection, and love when times are tough. A community that reminds us of our values of inclusion and equity for all and inspires us to continue to work for those values. A community that offers faith in our future and the spirit of life, even when both are hard to see. We are the place where love leads. So as you consider your pledge in the coming year, I urge you to remember that your investment in Chalice, your love for all we do, is an investment in the future of our fellowship, of our faith, and of our country. It's planting seeds for a future that will inspire, that will support and shelter others. And it's casting a meaningful vote for our values and the future that you want to see. It's kind of like a co-created equity fund, an investment in the indisputable fact and not opinion, the indisputable fact that we together can change the world in, the world in ways we cannot do alone. Helen Keller said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Sue, Thelma and Floyd each have been members here for around 50 years. And together they offer us well over a century of wisdom and experience. And why have they stayed so long? They've seen that being part of a community that nurtures spiritually courageous people has made them more courageous. They've seen that being in community with those who transform the world through justice and compassion has given them strength. It's given them hope. It's given them purpose. And it's given them faith in our future, right? It takes a village, my friends. We are that village. Our elders raised their children in this community because they instinctively knew they would become more thoughtful and caring citizens. And when our children see us gather and rally as a village, our actions and our love speak volumes. We are the place where love leads. That's what our children are learning. We've overcome tremendous hurdles over the last 60 years, and yet here we are continuing to build beloved community. Here we are in a future seeded from the past. Here we are during a pandemic, showing our love in action to farm workers, healthcare workers, and the unhoused. Here we are on the side of love as allies for marginalized folk, like transgender youth, our LGBTQ plus friends, and members of the BIPOC community. Here we are promoting love in our Conejo Valley Interfaith Association, supporting Muslim and Jewish brethren alike, and advocating against hate in our area. Right? Can I hear an amen something? <laughs> are you here with me? Amen. And whether you're sick or scared or lonely or exhausted or simply seeking more hope, faith and purpose in your lives my friends here we are we are here for you we are the place where love leads and that is why i have faith in our future that is why i so believe in us that is why my family and i give back a portion of my salary to this congregation because i believe in you I believe in Chalice. I believe in the work we do together. We are needed. Children and youth need us so they can grow up to be free, caring and true to who they are. Young people like Danielle and Weston need us so they can be in, in a, seeking hope in a world that is obscured by despair. Parents need our support as they undertake the demanding work of parenting and making a living during a pandemic, right, Shane? 
And our folk in their middle years need us as they navigate life's transitions and seek community. And our elders need us to ensure that they're not alone. We need their wisdom and they deserve our company through life's many trials. And people in the Conejo Valley need chalice, don't they? We've grown and deepened our presence in the sometimes polarized community. We're the love people, as the media called us. We show up to counter hate, bigotry, and violence. We're an oasis in this valley. We are needed. My friends, speak it with me. We are the place where love leads. My friends, my beloveds, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Lift up your voice. Be not afraid. Sing to the power of the love and faith within. And please join me by investing generously in our fellowship. Please join me in being a force for good in this valley, in this state, in this country, and in our world. Join me in our mission to bring more compassion and justice to all who need it, and we all need it, right? Show your faith in our future, because we are the place where love leads, and our world sure needs more love. So join me in empowering and sustaining Chalice for generations to come. And say it with me one more time. We are the place where love leads. May it be so. Amen.